I think of the traditional business, which has been buy side, hedge fund, gives an order to a cash or sales trader, and then they work it into the market. You look at the electronic space, it means you're giving the client the ability to go directly to the market through what we call DMA, direct market access. So they can set a limit price or uh, sell at the market point to point using the broker, or in this case, Memora's pipes and plumbing to access the market. The other alternative is they can send us that order, but we would then put it on an algorithm. And the algorithm comes in many different shapes and sizes. Some are uh, trying to replicate benchmarks, so it could be try to get me the closest thing to market on open or get me market on close. It could be something like the volume weight average price it would be the simple slices. Increasingly what's happening now are algorithms are getting more sophisticated. They're starting to um, kind of act as what that maybe cash sales trader ordinarily would do, which is if the stock moves, yeah, if the stock moves in my favor, be more aggressive. If it, if it goes away, uh, maybe don't chase it. So there's all sorts of nuances now that are being developed. There's a number of different things that kind of go into the algorithm. One is having a very good uh, quant analytics team and I, uh, investment technology team that um, develops market life structure, that studies models. Um, so in order to improve the performance of the algorithm, as well as the individual uh, kind of slice behavior, What's happening now is people that trade electronically run the risk of actually showing their hand to the market. So people can kind of tell that there is a buyer there. So a lot of these algorithms are getting very sophisticated in terms of how they interact. Uh, it's both. I, I would say the ones that are beta driven have tended to be more program trading oriented. And the program trading uh, community was kind of at the leading edge of technology because they had to be. They had to employ technology in order to trade a basket of stocks uh, as if it were one. So program trading community, which oftentimes are index funds, which are the kind of beta replication clients, have always been early adopters of technology. And as I mentioned before, uh, in terms of the individual algorithms getting more sophisticated, that has come more from the individual cash traders. We manage the buy side relationship, obviously. Nomura is a full service investment bank. We provide uh, research, corporate access, uh, we do deals, IPOs, etc. People pay us for a, multi a multitude the, the of profile, different reasons. Right, the access right. to the sell side in order to provide the sell side. Right. So, you know, that's the kind of quid pro quo, right? Now, we also, on the back end of that, we have a very good relationship with the exchanges. And we are a member of the exchange. So, uh, as a member, there are certain rights and privileges that you get, and as we have developed some alternative trading type systems, we're, we try to work very closely with each other. So, we have a dark pool uh, in Japan, and uh, we work very closely with the Tokyo Stock Exchange in order to make sure that happens smoothly. We, we, have, we have our own dark pool. Uh, it's called NX for Nomura Cross. It is globally consistent in terms of what Nomura in London does, what Nomura in the US is doing, and what Nomura in Asia is doing. So it has very similar uh, infrastructure, technology, and algorithms that reside within the dark pool. For the buy side, particularly the big global funds, because they know that we can interact with Nomura in any of the regions globally. They get the same level of service, the same level of performance, the same kind of look and feel of the algorithms. Nomura owns Instanet. Instanet owns a majority stake in China. 
um, so each of those components has a different uh, kind of product suite and potentially caters to different kinds of clients that want different things. So the overall umbrella, uh, yes, there's there's some overlap of client base, but if you look at what ChaiX does, which is a list uh, venue, it will look very much like an exchange. It has bids and offers that are publicly displayed. Uh, Instanet is an agency-only broker. Uh, they do not commit capital uh, during the trades. Uh, they typically don't have a fundamental research or do corporate access. Uh, they are big in the electronic trading space, and they have some dark rules. Nomura, on the other hand, is, a, like I said before, a full-fledged global investment bank. So through uh, various ownerships, yeah, it looks like we're completely interlinked. But at this point, we tend to operate more independently. Uh, obviously, if it's a sister company and we can work together in a mutually beneficial way, we'll do that. A perfect example of that might be Smart River Routing. So once someone has gone through our dark pool and then they want to move on to the next possible liquidity venue, we would work very closely with Internet or Chiants who are trying to make that happen. Well, it's growing. Um, you know, if you look at um, where Nomura was pre Lehman acquisition, uh, it was a Japan dominant electronic trading mostly DMA. Uh, since uh, that uh, acquisition, we've been able to diversify away from just DMA and more algorithms and away from Japan and not Japan Asia. Uh, our market share on Japan uh, has gone up. We're close to 10% of the TSC, which we view as a dominant position. We are making uh, inroads and we see the progress in terms of market shares in non Japan Asia as well. Right now, so it's, it's, a, uh, it's a good story, it's a positive story, a lot of growth behind it. And we're just now starting to get into a lot of the enhancements. Uh, before we were in a bit of a rebuild mode and a build out mode. Now we're starting to build uh, the kind of enhancements that everyone's looking forward to.